Alright guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to create uh, realistic looking shadows in iDraw that you can use in the shape library as well. So what we're going to do is I want to show you first just kind of how uh, this this isn't really like a drop shadow, that's more of a like an ambient shadow I guess you could call it. Uh, something that would be like um, just just uh, enough to give something weight uh, and look like it's you know like like sitting on top of uh, some sort of surface. So um, something something like this, very very simple. Uh, now obviously this would not have if the light is coming from above here. Let's uh, create a light. Uh, so. This is my this is my arrow. Uh, the light's pointing down like this, and uh, also maybe coming from the front. So y you've seen these shadows before. Um, uh, Apple uh, does really good at, at creating sort of these soft shadows, and then you can just create like an ellipse like this, and then just maybe lower the opacity of that until you get something that's you know, looks like it's just kind of sitting there, and that gets that gets the effect across. You know, maybe maybe a circle would even be a little better to get the idea here. So now you see, like like this this circle has something to sit on. You know, it's it's kind of given this shadow, and there's some light maybe coming forward like like uh, f you know facing the front of this so the shadow kind of goes behind it rather than down like this this would be more like if the light was coming from the from behind it um, and so you know if I'm on a background like this I could give this thing a gradial radiant a radial gradient a gradial radiant yeah and switch that around and you know so, so I can soften this up a little bit See how that softened it up? Let me bring the opacity back up. So that softened it up, but as you see, if I go, you know, to the edge here, it's um, it's 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 creating a really hard edge, creating a really hard edge there. Um, it's nice on the edges here, but uh, on the on the sides here, but you know, right here in front, it's very like chopped. So we're going to use Pixelmator. Let's use Pixelmator. Uh, if you haven't seen Pixelmator before, you can find it in the Mac App Store. We're going to create a new image. And we're going to create it uh, 900 pixels by 900. I want this to be not not so gigantic that you know it's, it's hard for uh, it to load, but I want to have some nice resolution um, so that it, it looks nice if I need to enlarge it. Uh, and what we're going to do is just hide the background layer, and we're going to use the gradient tool. What's the gradient tool? G for gradient tool. And just click in the, somewhere in the middle, in the center. And I'm holding shift to just make sure it's straight. And I'm going to let go before I, I hit the edge of the canvas. Like that, and I did that on the background layer, so I'm going to create a new layer. That's what I want to do. And try to hit just somewhere in the center, drag it out, now we can see what I'm doing. And before I hit the edge of the canvas, I'm going to let go. Now, if we see our, um, our transform tools here, the little squares, we can create it exactly... Uh, let's, let's make it constrained, it's fine. There we go. So I made it exactly the size of the canvas. Um, so there, there's a, a nice gradation from, from really dark hair in the center, and it goes out. If I show the background layer now, so you can see this on white. Let me hit OK there. You can see this nice radial gradient. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is save this. We're going to export it as a, a PNG, 
First, I'm going to turn off the background layer so I have the transparent pixels. Export to PNG. And I'm just going to save this to the desktop as shadow. Okay. Then what we're going to do is drag that into our iDraw document, just like that. Now what iDraw does is creates a frame in which it places that image. And you can see that over in the fill options right over here. So there you see it's a it's an image. Um, and what's cool about this is uh, that it's uh, it's going to embed this image into the iDraw document. So what I'm going to do is instead of scale to fit, I'm going to say stretch to fit under the, the fill options there. And this will give me the ability to shrink this down. If I hold shift, it will constrain the proportions. But I could, um, let me go over here. If, if it does this, and you know, where it's, it's just uh, like locked the orientation, go over to this ruler here and uncheck this little link icon. Then you can squash it. And I can make it the size that I want and the shape that I want. And let's get rid of this little ellipse there. Great, he somewhere like this. Yep. Then we can lower the opacity a little bit. Maybe down to like 60 something. And that gives us a much nicer soft shadow. See that? So if I copy it over here, I can make like this square can can kind of float. Maybe it's kind of floating above the surface a little bit. I can make it even more narrow like that. So there's a lot of things now I can do with this uh, this radial gradient. Now I, I put it to stretch and stretch to fill rather than scale to to fill. And and so I can make uh, like a long shadow like this. I can rotate it. Uh, I can squash it down create something very you know thin and narrow like like that which is really great for like just putting a shadow underneath something so like um, if I had a uh, just a little a box here or something I wanted to put text in um, you see how much it, it just kind of gives it depth kind of pops it off of the page and um, a lot of things that you can do with 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 that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this, this one here, copy back out here, and let's make it 900 again by 900. And then uh, I can go in here to my shape palette and add it as a custom shape. As you see, I already have one in here that uh, that has a little bit more body to it. It's a little bit more dense. So if I drag that one out, you can see what I mean. It's a little bit more dense. So you can create uh, variations of, of shadows and um, save them as PNGs and then uh, put them in here as custom shapes in the shape library so that you always have you know this just soft shadow that you can access within your palette. So that's a great way of creating you know more realistic soft shadows um, in uh, iDraw. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.